G'day folks, it's Michael from Doom and Darkness bringing you another battle report and tonight is a fantastic night because Grots are the best. I mean, Ogres are the best. I'm so confused. It is 2,000 points of my Gloom Spite against 2,000 points of Ogre More Tribes. We're playing Border War. Let's go take a look at the All right, folks, so uh, my Gloom Spite army and um, just ignore the shrine. It's still a work in process, but let's go. So we've got the uh, Trog Boss, who is my general, and um, he's got Gear Strike for his magical item. We've got nine uh, Rock Gut Trogos. We've got uh, six Fellwater Trogos. Then we've got two Shamans. So one Shaman's got Itchy Nuisance. The other one has the Hand of Gork. We've got two more units of three Fellwater Trogos, two units of 20 Shooters, and then two units of five um, Fanatics. So pretty excited to get these on the table. Pretty simple list, lots of Trogoths, couple of little Fanatics. <laughs> and making the second appearance on the channel, we've got the Rise of the Doom Bull and his Winter Bite Ogre Moor Tribe. So, uh, revised list this time. Slightly revised. Yep. And we're promising not to charge out into the middle of the board. And not going to uh, push everything across turn And one. just die. <laughs> turn two. All right, well, take us through your army and what have you done? Uh, we've got the Frost Lord on Stonehorn. He's not the general this time. Okay. Um, but he's running Ethereal Amulet, Amulet and Black Thatterhorn. Right, Ethereal, Stonehorn. So that's a big improvement to yep. start with. Uh, we've got a Huskar next to him. Um, general. He, he's not the general either. Oh. Uh, he's, so both Huskar has got Blood, blood Vultures. Yeah. One on the left's running Pulverizing Hailstorm, and he's got Alvagar Ancient, so yep. he always strikes last. Always strikes last if he doesn't charge. And the other guy is just got Call of the Blizzard. Yep. Got a unit of nine Yetis and a unit of three Yetis. Yep. Uh, we have the Butcher, who's got uh, Frostfang as the second artifact, mm -hmm. and he's taking Greasy Deluge as his spell. Yep. The Hunter uh, is the General. Mm, he's a familiar looking hunter. Got uh, Winter Touched as a command trait. There's three units of two Frost Sabres as mm -hmm. uh, battle line. Mm -hmm. And so you'll be able to deploy off the board and come charging in and uh, use that command trait. Yeah. So you've got a Scar, which gives you the extra battalion for the double mount trait. Yep. Um, you've got Greasy Deluge, so you can try and stack the negative ones to hit. Yep. Um, Ethereal Stonehorn, which is awesome. And then one big unit of Yetis that can take advantage of the. Always strikes first, um, ability from Winter Bite, and also the plus one to, to hit. Correct, so no surprises for you. No surprises for me. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're playing a Border War. Uh, this is what the table looks like. We're gonna go to deployment, and we'll come back and have a look at it. All right, folks, so after deployment, this is what it looks like. The uh, Winter Bite front and center. We've got all the beasts on the home objective, and then the Yetis and uh, Sabertus off to the um, off to the opposite side. For myself, we've got the uh, Fellwater, uh, sorry, the Rock Gut Trogos on the right, Boss in the middle. Then we've got our first little mini castle here up the back, mini castle here on the objective. Six trolls over here on the left hand side, and of course the fanatics waiting to go crazy. So my opponent has uh, outdropped me, and uh, he has the choice of who goes first. He's going to give me the first turn. Now watch as I push all my models across there. <laughs> all right, so we'll come back when uh, Gloom Spite gets turn one's go. All right, Gloom Spite gets turn one of my first ever game. And uh, well, the first thing we do, generate some command points. I've got Loon Skin on my Trog Boss, so he generates two. Um, from the start on every single turn and then I roll two dice on my shaman as well It's a really nice feeling to start the game with three to four command points All my spells are out of range with the exception of uh, hand of gork We get that off and teleport our unit of six trolls over onto the left hand objective Just to secure that objective I put them behind the tower where they it's going to be more difficult for his units to get to if he goes that way and it also poses a significant threat on that flank where he has to push something to uh, deal with it, otherwise I'm going to converge on his home objective. Rots and Fellwater Trogoths are little castles with um, fanatics in them as well. And what this means is each one of those is essentially three layers of, um, of fighting that someone has to get to. So I move the unit that's on my home objective forward, my first castle forward, and uh, then I move the castle that I've deployed to the rear forward to take their position on my home objective. What this means is that if he wants to push through to my home objective, he essentially will have to get through six different layers of uh, little grots. And I tell you what, it's a good feeling to be safe from a double turn. 
uh, on the right hand side we just push our rock gut trogloths up six inches we're quite conservative with those um, i don't want to take charge from both the yetis and the stone horn to be honest with you folks i'm only really scared of his stone horn in his army um, but I don't want to just run straight up and give him an easy charge straight onto me. I want to make, have to make him make some decisions. I'm moving my rear castle forward onto my home objective, like I said. And just to explain that further, I'll have, I have fanatics in there, which are one wall they have to get through. Then 20 grots with three trolls hitting over the front and then the three trolls. So uh, it takes at least two turns to get through all three of those units. At the end of my turn one, I score two of the objectives, my home and the left hand side one. I'm not within six here on the right hand side, so that gives me three points. And I'm quite comfortable just playing fairly conservative at this point. And the beautiful thing I have to say about Gloom Spite is that you can really play to the priority because you have the, deal, the tools in your army to deal with it. For example, if my opponent was just to go full tilt straight down the center of my home objective now, I know that simply by releasing my fanatics, I'll hold him there for at least a turn. Then, should he get the double turn, he's only going to kill a wall of grots at best. So, I really... We go into more tribes, turn one. And I'm just going to say now, folks, that he has two Thunder Tusks there. And for the entire game, none of their prayers do anything. In one of the rounds, he gets plus one to wound off on the Stonehorn. But it's not around the Stonehorn is in combat. And he never gets Pulverizing Hailstorm. He never gets to regrow a Yeti. He just continually fails to get any of his prayers off constantly. So I don't need to mention them. The Thunder Tusks don't get a single prayer off of any consequence in the entire game, which is telling. Now my opponent plays very conservative here after what happened in the last game and um, just wants to hold back and doesn't want to push everything into the forward where I can into the center where I can jump on him. So he just shuffles his troops about, mainly getting his Thunder Tusks in position where they can throw their um, their snowballs. He puts a one snowball onto my um, uh, Gits and kills maybe six of those. He's at plus two uh, to do the mortal wounds on them and then does in combination with the Blood Vault to get four wounds through onto the Rock Gut Trogoths and kills one of those as well. My opponent also doesn't have any real screens in his army, so he's very conscious about the priority role and putting himself in a position early where I can bring all of my army to bear uh, should I win the initiative. He pushes a unit of Saber Tusks up onto the objective on the left hand side to capture that and the Ogamore tribes are going to end their turn one on holding two objectives, his and the left hand side, for three points to three. Alright folks, this is the uh, end of battle round one summary and uh, well, my turn, I moved up, I scored three points because I hand of gawked um, onto this left hand objective and I just held my own objective in uh, my opponent's turn. He's playing reserved as well, push some um, Sabre Tusks up onto this objective, just moves forward so he's in shooting range. He killed six of my Grots over here with the um, Frost Wreath Ice and then um, actually managed to kill a troll as well with the blood vultures and the frost wreath, wreath ice over here. I uh, used a battle shock point, a uh, battle, sorry, command point to auto pass battle shock over here. And these guys are wholly within 12 of the shrine still, so I'm okay. So now we're just going to roll. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is see where the, um, the moon goes. So on a one, two, five, it just moves one spot. On a uh, six, it moves two, uh, five, one spot. It might actually be on a one, it doesn't move at all, but um, five, so it just moves one, just in the center here over my trolls, which is lovely where we want it. So now for initiative. So one, two, three, go. I got a six. Oh, that's so cocked. <laughs> <laughs> and a four. Might have to have a think about it. After winning the initiative, I give the double turn to my opponent. I'm in a really good position to waste his double turn. I have all of my screens up. Uh, he played quite conservative last turn, so he's not in a position to take advantage of it. And um, uh, this gives me the opportunity to play for the double turn going into two to three or three to four and so forth. And this is the perfect example of when you want to give the initiative away, uh, when I am set up ready to receive anything that he can throw at me and um, it burns his double turn. Because if he gets a double turn, once my screens are down or once my fanags are out, 
that's when uh, he can do the real damage. So I give him the turn and uh, he is not quite sure <laughs> what to do. He knows that I'm potentially playing for the double turn now. So again, he's in that difficult situation. If he pushes forward, it goes into my turn, we fight, I win the initiative again, it could be all game over for my opponent. So it is a, uh, a difficult decision to make if you don't have multiple screens in your army. Opponent pushes his Saber Tusk just three inches away from my Rock Gut Trogos on the left hand side. He just wants to restrict as far as they can move forward and thus he can restrict the impact that they'll have on double turn. If he can keep my next turn to just fighting them, then if I do win the double turn, then I may or may not be able to fight the Yetis. With the exception of that, he mostly just wants to um, focus those Thunder Tusks onto my Grots containing the uh, Fanatics. He is worried that, well, he is hoping that if he can kill those Grots, he can wipe the Fanatics as well. But um, the Grots are under 20 now. He's only getting plus one. The second shot, he's not getting anything. And so between both Thunder Tusks, I think he kills maybe another nine, um, leaving me with five left in the unit. Uh, Gloom Spite turn two, and there are no combats to resolve in that um, uh, More Tribes players turn, so straight into it we go. And uh, the first thing we do, well, we generate a whole bunch of command points again, and it is lovely. I have all the command points in this game that I ever need to do anything to auto pass, battle shock, immunity on every unit on the on the table, to make any run roll a six, to reroll combat uh, ones of combat, and to use my Trogoth command ability. Um, I've got all the command points I need and it is very, very nice. We managed to get um, the Hand of Gork off again and I teleport the three trolls which are behind my front little castle. There aren't many grots left so they're not very protected. Just over onto the left hand objective again. I want those three trolls to hold that objective uh, freeing up my six trolls to now push forward and start to threaten um, his home objective. I am conscious I'm playing for the double turn now and so I want to take precautions in case I don't get it but I also want to put just a lot of options there and put my models in, an, in a position where they're going to be able to take advantage of it if I get it. Uh, we push our uh, run our grots up uh, the five grots left straight up in front of him. I'm going to release the fanatics out of them and then on the right hand side I move my Trogoths around him as much as I can so that when I get a charge, I can get as close to the Yetis as possible. Again, I'm really just trying to position myself where um, I can take the most advantage of the double turn should I get it. I push the Trog boss forward around the side as well. And I have to say, guys, I really love the Trog boss. Not for his rules, not for anything like that, but when you're moving that model around and when you're fighting with him, You've really got an emotional attachment to him. He is a cool little model for sure. We did throw an arcane bolt and also a um, rock at the um, at the saber tusks on the left, but weren't able to kill them. And in the center here, I released the fanatics out of that unit of grots three inches away from my opponent. And um, the problem they have is that all of my opponent's army is pretty much negative one to hit combat. Fanatics normally hit on fours and do good damage, but when they're on fives, it's not so good. Roll a 10 inch charge with the uh, rock gut trolls, and I think maybe I'll be able to get into his husk guard, but um, uh, turns out I, I can't. So we just push the trolls around to my opponent's side of the saber tusks, uh, get them six inches away from the yetis. I don't want the yetis to do their six inch pile in on me, and um, that, and then put the troll boss, trog boss, into the saber tusk and. Uh, He's more than a match for them. With the Fanatics, we uh, make the charge into the Butcher and then into the um, the other Huskard on Thunder Tusk. And I do put all of the attacks into the Huskard on. All right, folks, so the end of uh, turn two summary. Uh, I am playing for the double turn this turn. So um, uh, what did we do? Well, we we'll started with the, the More Tribes player. He just played defensive and uh, stayed back. He put his uh, Saber Tusk just three inches away from my Rock Guts, just wanted to try and keep them hemmed as far back as they could. And then he put uh, both of his Blasts with the Thunder Tusk onto my um, my little Grots and uh, killed, I think, probably 11 of them, maybe a little bit less. Um, in my turn, we just pushed across. We got Hand of Gork off and we moved um, three more Trolls over there. I just want to hold that objective so that my unit of six Trolls if I win the double turn now, I can push across, or even if I don't, there's still a big threat that can assault from that side of the board. 
um, and we just pushed up here with our trolls. Now there was an opportunity, sorry, we released the Fanatics and uh, they went into the Husk Guard uh, and did 10 wounds to him. Yeah. And then the Butcher chopped four of them up and the Husk Guard um, trampled the last one to death under his hooves. So uh, there was an opportunity here where my trolls, I could have piled in and then brought the, the Yetis in, but it doesn't do me any good to do that. So uh, that's the end of turn two. I score five points um, and we're going to roll for initiative. But before we do that, we see where the moon goes. Mm -hmm. So on a two to a five, it jumps one. So three, so it jumps in the middle of the board. So it is now covering the entire board, which means I get to pick some of your units and do D3 model wounds. And also my wizards are plus one to cast and my trolls are all healing as well. So we'll resolve that off, um, off camera and now we'll do initiative. One, two, three, go. I got a six again. He rolled off the table. Six it off. was, it was, it's sliding off on a six and a two. So I'm going to take the double. I turn. lost every, every priority. In this end, we want to get, once again, generate uh, more than enough command points. And um, I do fail to get itch, itchy nuisance off though, in any phase of the game. So that never comes in. My opponent is feeling a little bit deflated at the moment. Um, he knows how impactful the double turn can be. But um, looking at it at the moment, my trolls on the left-hand side can only really get into his screen of yetis over there on the left. And my rock guts can deal with his yetis on the right-hand side. I'm confident of that. But I am more than aware of the power of a single stone horn. And a single stone horn, especially that he's got a chance for a double turn now, can be absolutely devastating. So we just throw our rock with the trolls and so forth onto the husk guard. I just want to do those last one or two wounds to um, kill him off and then hopefully deal with those yetis with the rock guts and then um, I'll be okay. He'll be in a difficult decision uh, position then because his stone horn will have to decide does he go after the unit of six uh, fellwater trogoths you can see approaching now or does he go after the rock guts on the other side. Every single turn we are putting up the command ability with the um, uh, the Trogoth boss which is reroll ones for friendly troll units wholly within 18 which is actually quite nice. It's really effective on himself and really effective on that unit of trolls as well. In the very center of the table we just move our remaining five grots up three inches away from him. I'm just trying to block him completely from it being able to go that direction at all. And then I move the fungoid fat cave shaman up behind them uh, it's just another blocker. This is really just meaning that he can't go straight across the center of the table. And if he wins a double turn, then he's going to have to go through a line of grots. And then the next turn, he's going to have to go through that fungoid cave shaman as well. So just trying to block my opponent to stop him being able to shoot out the center in the next turn. Charges, the trolls make it on the um, on the far side and uh, the rock gut trogoths make it into the yetis. Now the rock guts on all of my trolls have a two inch range so they can attack over the back of each other and it's easy to get them in. My trog boss makes a big charge as well. All right folks so um, gloom spike gets turn three on the double turn and um, end of turn summary. So uh, well we charge in with our uh, rock gut trogoths over here and um, attack the yetis first. I was at negative one to hit so I'm hitting on fours re-rolling ones from my command ability from my um, trog boss and I put 15 wounds through to the yetis. Um, they attacked back subsequently and did, mm, I feel like six damage to me. One dead troll and one troll on two. Yep, so they got six damage through. Um, I attacked with my trog boss here and I actually squished one of the yetis dead, so broke his coherency there and then um, just walloped did 10 damage through to the butcher as well, killed him. Um, over here, the uh, trolls got to attack, um, or they took two damage from the three yetis, but then managed to just absolutely kill those yetis, and um, that's where the combat ends. So, uh, Battleshock phase, and um, he spends a command point to auto pass on the yetis, he's just within six, but then he's out of coherency, so he takes the one model away from the outside there. And that's where the Gloom Spike gets, ends their turn three. Um, I score five more points as we go into more tribes. Turn three, playing for the double turn. And um, let's see what this Stonehorn can do. 
Right, so more tribes turn three, and uh, my opponent's feeling a little bit disheartened, but he is certainly not out. And it's moments like this when those big brain plays come into um, come into play. So, uh, in my opponent's hero phase, nothing happens. Nothing really ever happens in the ogre hero phases. Once again, his uh, huskard on Thunder Tusk fails to do anything with his two prayers. On the near side, my opponent realizes that he can run that unit of Sabertus just around the outside of the Rock Gut Trogos, get within six inches of them and cap the objective from me. And he's going to be able to run and retreat with the Yetis out of combat with Rock Guts and then six inch pile in back in and potentially tag them on the corner to keep them in place. If that plan works, then uh, his Stonehorn will be able to push across and deal with the um, Fellwater Trogoths. He retreats the two saber tusks that were there and just makes a screen three inches away from the trog boss and his husk guard to prevent that flank and prevent me pushing across onto his objective if he wins the initiative if i win the initiative sorry meanwhile he pushes his um both his husk guard on thunder tusk and also the uh, frost lord on stonehorn over towards that unit of six trolls He's conscious that he's got two units bearing down on his home objective and he absolutely needs to deal with one and he can't risk diverting his forces and uh, potentially not killing either. So both monsters push over three inches away from my trolls just getting ready for the big charge. I know those trolls are not long for this world but my opponent at this stage is not as familiar with the stone horn on the charge as I am so I know what's coming He's not 100% sure that he's going to kill the trolls, but uh, I know they're not long for this world. He brings his hunter on here um, just within six of the objective. So this means that uh, he's going to be within 12. The hunter is the general. He'll be within 12 of those yetis. So if the yetis take damage after their six inch pile in, as long as there's one left, he'll be able to auto pass the battle shock with them and that will keep my trogoths stuck into combat. That hunter also counts as two models for the purposes of capturing that objective. So if my fell water trogoths, sorry, my rock guts are able to pile in and get one or two models onto the objective, that hunter will um, enable him to, to capture it still. Uh, both of his big monsters make the charge into the um, uh, make the charge into the fell water trogoths, and he does about four or five mortal wounds. On the charge with each one of those monsters and um, he decimates the unit almost half the unit gone before the frost lord even starts to attack all right folks so end of uh, turn three Summary, more tribes have just had their turn three and um, well, it's a bit of a tricksy one. So what happened? Well, um, firstly, <laughs> Troll's dead, right? So shot into them, um, both monsters charged them. He got- um, Nine each charge. Yeah, yeah, like rolled a nine on each charge and probably got, um, you know, four to six mortal wounds per charge in damage on the Trolls. Um, put it shooting into them for another two as well from the Thunder Tusk and then the Stone Horn. We didn't even get to the horns damage before all the trolls were dead. So um, Rise of the Doom Bull, it could be called the Rise of the Stone Horn because he's discovering something beautiful. Over here on the right hand side, we did some tricksy moves. He retreated those Saber Tusks out of combat to keep a screen up and then um, retreated the Yetis and ran them out of combat and then piled back in just to tag me. He wants to keep those rock gut trogoths there tied up in combat. I was still able to pile in and get three of my trolls in. I did 10 wounds to him. Um, he has one Yeti left, keeping me held up in combat in um, on one wound. So that worked out for him. And the hunter's ambushed on here between the hunter and also the running dogs. He's captured this objective well and truly. So uh, it was looking doom and darkness for Rise of the Doom Bull when I got that double turn, but um, he could win a double now. So he's behind on points. He scores another three points for this turn. I'm putting it to 13 my way to his nine as um, we first roll off for the moon to see where the moon's going to go. Uh, four, so it's just going to move one over here. Do, 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 do. 
which is fine. And um, uh, so I'll get to pick a unit. I'll have a go at one of those monsters. And um, now we roll for initiative. So go, I get a three and he gets, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit sorry for my opponent at this turn because if he had won that initiative, if he hadn't been able to win one initiative, then um, then his Stonehorn would be on a murder rampage. But um, Gloom Spike gets turn four and well, we generate more command points once again. I'm sitting at about uh, six command points every single turn and every single turn I probably use three and then every single turn I go back up to six. So it's a pretty comfortable place to sit, I have to say. Now I am ahead on points um, by a fair amount at this point and I can give up this nearest objective to us and then push everything for the home objective but I really don't need to. All I need to do is just consolidate, make sure I hold three objectives for this turn and then in the next turn even if he takes two of them back I'll be too far ahead. So as much as I want to send the trog boss off and try and get, you know, have a trog boss against a stonehorn battle or something like that, in reality, I just need to deal with um, uh, recapturing this nearest objective to me. So we use our boulder throw from our uh, rock gut trogoths. Um, oh, the first thing is in the movement phase, what do we do? Well, we retreat and run those two little um, uh, grots through the gap between the frost sabers and the husk guards there and um, just still onto the objective what that means is he can't push his big monsters away and um, hope to hold the objective we run our fungoid cave shaman uh, through the gap as well we do just have to make sure measure his space to make sure there's a gap between the two combat gauges big enough for his space to fit through he can so he runs through onto the home objective as well giving me three models out of combat on his own home objective He's only got two Saber Tusks there, so if he runs his monsters away, he won't hold his home objective anymore. So it puts him in a difficult position. We charge our Trog Boss into the uh, Saber Tusks and then the uh, Rock Guts into the Saber Tusks as well. I'll attack with the Rock Guts first, I'll clear the Saber Tusks and then my uh, Troll Boss will be able to 3-inch pile in into the Hunter that's just behind that tower and kill him. I'll recapture that objective and that will be awesome and fantastic. We push those trolls, the river, river trolls on the north side, just forward, hoping for a long bomb charge. Um, I'm going to hold it this turn. I know I'm going to lose it this turn no matter what I do, so um, let's just fight. Alright folks, so the end of Gloom Spite turn 4, uh, combat summary. Um, well, over here we uh, charge with it. We use the rock guts um, rock throw to clear off that last yeti that was pinning us, and then charge into the saber tusks and killed them. I really wanted to go that way, but um, it would have meant that my troll would have had to kill the saber tusks, and then his hunter would have still held it. So I needed the trolls to clear the saber tusks so that the trog boss could um, kill the yeti. The yeti got to uh, sorry, the hunter got to attack him first and did two wounds to him, but then the troll. Did 10 wounds back to him and squished the hunter so um, that's awesome uh, I failed my charge over here on the left like I said and um, that's it we score another five points as we go into more tribes turn four all right more tribes turn four and um, now that he's discovered the power of an ethereal stone horn uh, let's see how many points that he can claw back in his last two turns of the game so the and now he's going to push so stone horn for the fire objective that the trolls are guarding and the um husk guard uh, straight down the guts towards my uh castle on my home objective now you will notice that i released my fanatics in my last charge phase uh, not really to do any damage but just to get another screen out there and another barrier so that he can't uh, get right up in my grill and get that charge he's hoping that um he's going to shoot with his snowball at my two little grots on his home objective so that he'll still outnumber me there and then he's going to charge into the fanatics and hopefully kill the fanatics with the mortal wounds from uh, from that and then that will give him turn five to make a big double push with both the husk guard and the stone horn onto my home objective and uh, take that for the big four points 
air charges, the house guard does four, kills four fanatics on the charge, and the stonehorn kills a uh, fellwater trogoth. But most importantly, two saber tusks take on the um, the shaman in the most epic combat ever. All right, folks. So the end of turn five, uh, sorry, turn four summary. Um, after more tribes, and uh, it is murder, bloody murder. So the stonehorn just absolutely murked those three trolls as expected, and um, the husk guard was able to. Well, he killed um, four of the fanatics on the charge. Maybe three of the fanatics on the charge. There's only one left. It attacked, negative one to hit, didn't do anything to the husk guard, and he squashed it beneath his hooves. But the battle of the century is going on here for the home objective. Two frost savers against a, uh, a shaman. He did one damage to me, I did one damage to him. We're gonna grind this out. So at the end of um, uh, more tribes turn four, he scores another three points. Uh, so what is it, 18 to 12? As um, first, we'll see where the moon goes. Moon, shadow, moon, shadow. So it jumps off the board. And then um, we've got to roll for initiative. I got a four, get a four. So maintains the same. Who had the choice last round? Mm -hmm. I did. I won it. I won it on a six. So I have the choice again. And... Um, I mean, I think I have to take it. Yeah. All right, folks. So um, uh, the game ends here. My turn five. We go on the hero phase. We get lots of command points and so forth. Um, and the shaman over here uh, gets his uh, AOE spell off. Does three mortal wounds to the saber tusk and kills them. Um, and that's where the game ends. So if uh, Rise of the Doombull had won that initiative, he could have got the double charge in on my home objective. Um, and then taking that, and over there, he would have scored seven points, which puts him on 20. So I would have been 18 to 20. And then um, if I score two, which was just this one here, then um, you know it could have possibly been a draw. But because I won the initiative, me just simply sitting on these two objectives, my home and this one on the right-hand side, give me three points, and there's no way that he can catch up to that. So um, um, unless you ran across here, Capture that? Yeah, maybe you've got to get that home. You've got to get the home objective, that's right. Number of and even and even and even now I can um because you're outside of six, I can move my grots up and tag him. Yeah. And then um I'm immune to battle shock because of this. And um oh, I wanna see if I get the grots back on a four plus. <laughs> yes, I get ten more grots back. So ten more grots come back here. And um, it just secures the objective even more. So um, let's come back for a little after action report. All right, folks. So after action report and um, Rise of the Doom Bull. This is your second incarnation of the Winter Bite. Uh, I think a much better list than before, but um, still got some work to do. So why don't you just tell us your thoughts on uh, well, how the game went, what you thought of the Gloom Spite, and we'll talk about Thunder Tusks and stuff a bit. Yep. Uh, well, it's fair to say there was a bit of a pouty lip going on after <laughs> some of the early double turns against me, but once um, the Stonehorn took off over to uh, the River Trolls, what are they called? Fellwater Trogoths. Fell water um, and the two, uh, the two monster um, impact hits were both good. They um, did, did some work on the, on the Fellwaters and smash that unit on that side. Um, I guess the, the I wasn't so threatened on both halves of the table so badly. Mm -hmm. So really the, the Stonehorn did almost all of the work for this game for me today. Um, and the only benefits from the Huskard was from its charge. There's a little bit of mortal wound just sort of jumping around here or there, but not really to any great effect. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we were talking about it before and the two husk guards shooting at the same unit of grots pretty much for two turns didn't wipe it didn't out. kill it. So it's like 130 points for um, 20 grots and you put six, points. 680 points in two turns into that yeah. with it shooting and also your, your pulverizing hailstorm, which only went off once in the whole game and didn't do anything. Yep, yeah. and the heels were too hard to get off on a three up. And yeah. um, like I occasionally got that plus one to wound off. But yeah, but not at a time when it had an yeah. impact. And so it was really like the where the Husk Guard was good was doing mortal wounds on the charge 
and Canning's ten models, yeah. which and is the elite stable because if it's yeah uh, if it's going to be getting um, adding some value to the game mm -hmm. only from its charge, well, you might as well have a stone horn that has better um, combat profile. Yeah, and more resilient. And yeah, yeah. you're right. The allegiance abilities, the uh, ten model count was important for objectives, mm -hmm. um, and it does make a big difference. But mm -hmm. it just there doesn't. I guess moving on to Thunder Tusks. It doesn't appear to be a great deal of reasons to take them. I'm really trying to find a reason since I have four yeah. of them painted. Yeah. <laughs> but whilst they're still in the points value they are, um, I can't see the war scroll changing, but the points value could come down, but it won't come down dramatically. 40 points max. Can't see it coming down enough to make them make still them worthwhile. Yeah. They'd have to be 200 points. Yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, 200, you think? If yeah. they're 200 points, then... They you don't think 260 becoming, or 280? Oh, I don't know. I'm probably a, a bit um, negative on it at the moment yeah. after a couple of games seeing them do nothing. Yeah. Um, they, I feel like they just need a, a, a massive shift. Yeah. Because yeah. all they're doing is counting as 10 wounds and getting some more wounds, impact hits on the charge. Yeah. And that's the only value they seem to add. I think there's some, some I st still think there's some use there for one with Avgar Ancient and Iron Guts. Yeah. I still think that's a really potent combination. Yeah. Um, so I think we'll probably yeah. try that in the next game, yeah. I reckon. Um, but like get rid of two, don't have two, just take the one. Just take one. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about the Gloom Spite? So this is your first game against Gloom Spite and my first game with him as well. What did you, um, you think? They had a lot of, uh, a lot of abilities that, um, well, they, they did a lot of things. Uh, um, they did a lot of nice little things. Yeah. But nothing too ridiculous, did they? No, his, the, so your, um, your generals um, reroll once wholly within 18 was really good. Yep. The two fungoids, their spells were both excellent. Yep. Um, and I had to be protective of the backboard all game as a result of it. You had lots of units that, you know, units of six trolls, units of eight trolls that um, could jump around the board and get in nasty places very easily. Lots of command points to just re-roll, just do any, yeah. it, like, I always had enough, I just finished the game on six or eight, but I had enough command points the entire game to do anything I wanted to yeah. any you unit want to re -roll at the time. Reroll ones, re -roll ones auto pass yeah. battle shock. Yeah. yeah. So, run make us a run of six. Um, yeah, I thought they were really good. The, um, the Fanatics were uh, good. They basically took care of that first on the tusk and it does make a difference you know the plus one to uh, the prayer roll getting that stuff off and that knocks the heal out like the, that the wouldn't make any difference in this game the negative one to hit on your army from against the fanatics really nullified them because when they're yeah. on d6 attacks and they're going to fives to hit it makes a huge difference because otherwise they can be quite explosive um would have been wasted against your stone horn um, the Yetis have got the negative one. So let's just talk about the Yetis there. We did have a Yeti versus Rock Gut fight mm -hmm. with the Rock Guts attacking first. If you had have had a unit wholly within 12 of those Yetis, you probably could have attacked first. And But you didn't. Mm -hmm. But I think you worked out just on averages, those nine Yetis attacking first against the nine Rock Guts. Yeah, probably kill three models at best. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, you could easily just hit, hitting on fours. It's easy to to fluff it. Yeah, the, the Yetis still have some value, mm -hmm. um, and maybe the unit of twelve would have been better than the two units. But you need a bit of flexibility to block and capture objectives, and you know run around late game snagging an objective for a point. So you can't completely limit yourself entirely. Um, yeah, I wonder if you can just have two Frost Lords on Stonehorn. One husk guard on Thunder Tusk, um, uh, four Iron Guts, three units of Yetis, and a Skull. Yeah. Or even two units of Yetis just to backfield and stuff. Your Iron Guts and the Alvaga Ancient um, a very good defensive unit, and then you just push two Stone Horns across the board and smash. Mm. I wonder yeah, if that's a thing. They've definitely got the damage output. Um, mm. If you want to keep playing, a beast core heavy uh, open war tribes army you really need to put um two stone horns on the board yeah <laughs> i really enjoyed playing the the gloom swipe to be honest with you they i uh, like had enough numbers had trolls had two inch reaches 
I had negative ones. I had the spells I wanted, the versatility. Yeah, nothing. Had damage output. It had damage output, but nothing was ridiculous. I actually really liked the Trog boss. He was like doing 10 damage a turn, which was not yeah, bad. Fell waters with their built in negative one to hit. Um, but that's that's mm -hmm. just great natural buff to have yep. uh, on something that's got some uh, healing as well. Have healing it... didn't come into it much, but it's, it's still great to have. Your yeah. bodies. These, got these castles, units. the 20, um, 20 grots, the three trolls, and then the fanatics, actually means that when I if I release the fanatics the turn before, I can always prepare be safe against the double yeah. because once the fanatic's out, I've got two walls of chaff. Yeah. So I really like that. Like, I really, really like that. Um, I might change the fell waters around, like just play with the numbers and um, some other units instead of those. But as a, as a base, I just good sort of mid table fun yeah. army that could do everything in every phase, but no broken mechanics or anything like that. I really liked it. So, all right, well, back to the drawing board for the Winter Bite, you think? Uh, yeah, possibly. Uh, the benefit of Winter Bite against a, um, a shooting heavy army is, you know, it's really good having that mm -hmm. negative one to hit. It doesn't come into play in this game, Yeah. but it is nice to have. Um, yeah. The Winter Bite's not got enough uh, benefits. Um, so, so I think it's, the answer's probably, if you know you're not likely to face a long list of shooting heavy armies, mm. you're probably better off not in winter bite. Yeah, no, that, listen, like hands down without any, um, boulder head is just 20 times better than winter bite mm. um, in almost every occurrence. Um, there's just not enough reasons to play winter bite. No, there's really not. It doesn't um, have enough value. And so, and what you end up doing is like you said, like in the whole game, the only thing that really did anything was your stone horn for the yeah. most part as far as like earning its points back or really being effective. And so if I look at my army and I wanna make it better, I take more stone horns. Mm. And then if I'm taking more stone horns, well, how are stone horns in winter bite better than they are in boulder head? Well, they're not. Yeah. So then you end up just at boulder head. So it just forces you down that path. Yeah. But if you really like, you're like, no, no, I really wanna just keep with these yetis and, um, and, um, and keep with winter bite, well, um, you sure, you can do that. For the thematic purposes. It really is for the thematic purposes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You really love them. Um, or like you play against KO all the time. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like if your only opponent is like KO or you're up against free cities all the time, well, having heaps of stone hat horns at minus one to hit and shooting in your territory is actually really good. Sure. That's yeah. like, it's, but that's a situational. Yeah. That's right. You're not going to build a list around being no. good against a shooting heavy meta that you know, doesn't really exist. You might come up against a shoot cast, yep. you know, storm cast eternals list and, and have it be pretty beneficial, but yep. you know, you're not going to build a list around that. And that just, that's mm. really the only, only benefit of playing them. And the, and the, seems to come into the game. Yeah, the Yetis for all their six and piling is good. You probably really need to practice keeping the hero within 12 of them all the time. Or get him on the board. <laughs> yeah, get him on the board. So, yeah, and you need screens, don't you? Yeah. I think the way I used to play Yetis with four units of three, I was a bit better playing them that way. And That's how you're used to playing them. Yeah, sure, I'm yeah. used to playing them that way, just as, as a speed bump and a screen and, you know, retreat out and pile back in and just tag yeah. things. And, and I'll, I'll probably be better off with two stone horns, maybe three units of three Yetis, get the skull in there, get mm. some iron guts. And if that all fits from a points point of view, then you've got a bit more damage potential. And I think we can, yeah, I think to be honest with you, we can get winter bite and get your models you have and add minimal models to it and get it to a really optimal place. But we need 10 games to do it, mm. right? And this is a game two. Yeah. Right, so like tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it. And then once we've got it as good as we can after maybe another two or three games, then practice, 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 you know, yeah. and then you're like, okay, this is as good as we, I think, you know, we could get a suboptimal build. Yeah. So, um, cause like there's, if I, um, play the turns better and, um, still play I mean, one stone horn and three husk guards, um, they still do. Uh, mortal wounds on the charge if i'm playing aggressively with him and getting them in then it can happen 
I really oh, think you need just, to be double, broken way going yeah, about it. double stone horn, yeah. one husk guard, and then even you start to question, well, why do I have the husk guard? Yeah. <laughs> Unless he's on a stone horn. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. I'll buy one off you, by the way. Um, they look great. All right, so that's it, folks. And um, I hope you enjoyed that after action report. That was quite good. And I um, hope you enjoyed the Gloom Spike kits. We'll be seeing more of them on the channel. I'll be playing these guys and this type of army um, when I'm not running the ogres. So it's a bit of a break. So Ryze can play his ogres against these guys. And um, um, the list. yeah, I've got some. I've got my own new ogre list coming shortly. So uh, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao grazie.